Kansas City PBS. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the Lawrence Welk Show, celebrating more than 60 years on television. Now sit back and enjoy the show selected especially for public television. everyone, I'm Mary Lou Metzger and welcome to the Lawrence Welk Show. Our program is called Songs by Johnny Mercer and it originally aired in 1976. We're treated to some great songs like Tangerine, sung by Guy and Rolna, Fools Rush In, sung by Tom Netherton, and Charade, danced to by Bobby and Sissy. Following the show, Welk star Guy Hovis will be my special guest and he shares some wonderful memories of the Lawrence Welk Show. But right now, here's the maestro himself, Lawrence Welk. It's really a great pleasure for us to salute one of America's truly great songwriters, Johnny Mercer. This much love, gentlemen, has written the words and occasionally also the music for hundreds of songs, most of them hits. Here's one of four Academy Award winners for the man we're honoring this evening. This one written with Henry Mancini. What a wonderful song. Here's a good example of one of Johnny's early hits. Goody, goody. You'll hear Henry Cuesta, Bob Havens, and all of the champagne music makers. We invite you to dance. Are you ready, boys? A one and two. <laughs> Thank you. 
as you can see, the boss really enjoys that kind of music, too. Johnny Mercer has collaborated with most of the great composers of our time and has written lyrics of all types. Here's a beautiful song which received an Academy nomination for Johnny and Jerome Kern. Let's listen to our lovely champagne lady, Norma Zimmer. folks remember a hit recording by the Jimmy Dorsey band, Tangerine, with words, of course, by Johnny Mercer. Here we have Guy and Ronald recalling the famous Dorsey singing team of Bob Everly and Helen O'Connell. With mascara eyes and chapeau by dashé Tangerine with her lips aflame If the color keeps Louis Philippe's to blame Yes, she's got them all in a world, but she's only fooling one girl. She's only fooling Tangerine. Tangerine, she is all they claim with her eyes of night. Lips as bright as flame Tangerine Oh, when she passes by Senorita stare and caballero sigh And I've seen Toast to Tangerine Raised and never bought Cross the Argentine Oh, she's got them all on the run But 
But her heart belongs to just one Her heart belongs to Tangerine and a great performance by Guy and Rona. Johnny Mercer wrote the English words to a beautiful French melody. You'll hear it now by our little Mexican senorita, Ana Connie, with Bob Ralston at the piano. The falling leaves drift by Sunburned hands I used to hold Since you went away The days grow long And soon I'll hear Old winter song I miss you most of all that points up Johnny Mercer's fine sense of humor and his bright outlook on life. These three pretty girls also have the same qualities, Sandy, Gail, and Mary Lou. Students, today our subject is electricity. Now, in electricity, we have a positive charge and a negative charge, and don't mess with Mr. In-Between. Do you follow me? Yes, teacher. You do? What did I say? <laughs> You got an accent to ain't the positive feeling and ain't the negative and latch on to the affirmative. Don't mess with Mr. In Between. You gotta spread joy up to the maximum, bring gloom down to the minimum and have faith. Or pandemonium's liable to walk upon the scene To illustrate my last remark Jonah in the way, Noah in the ark What did they do just when everything looked so dark? Man, they said we better accent Chew 
eliminate the positive, eliminate the negative, and latch on to the affirmative. Don't mess with Mr. In Between. No, don't mess with Mr. In Between. To illustrate my last remark, Jonah in the whale, Noah in the ark. What did they do? Just when everything looks so dark Man, they said we better accent Chew ate the positive, eliminate the negative And latch on to the affirmative Don't mess with Mr. In-Between No, don't mess with Mr. In-Between No, don't mess with Mr. in Accentuate the positive. Very good, girls. Very good. Very good. Johnny Mercer's songs really stand the test of time. This one, for example, is now enjoying its second revival. You'll hear Tom Netherton and our singers. Where wise men never go But wise men never fall in love So how are they to know up your heart and let this fool rush in. Greatest young dance couple, Sissy and Bobby. And the song charade is by one of America's greatest songwriting teams, Johnny Mercer and our good friend, Henry Mancini.
Beautiful Dancing by Sissy and Bobby. A fine arrangement by Bob Ralston. Everyone seems to get a kick out of family albums. I think you will enjoy doing a little reminiscing with Larry Hooper and Jimmy Roberts. This family album, Hoopy, sure brings back a lot of memories. Yeah, Jim, things have sure changed since we were boys. Did your mother realize the Stark delivered quite a prize the day he left you on the family tree? And did your dad appreciate that you were merely super great, the miracle of any century? If they didn't just send them both to me. You must have been a beautiful baby. You must have been a wonderful child When you were only starting to go to kindergarten I'll bet you drove the little girls wild <laughs> And when it came to winning blue ribbons You must have shown the other kids how oh, yeah. I can see the judge's eyes as they handed you the prize I bet you made the cutest bow <laughs> Oh, you, you must, must have been a beautiful baby Cause baby, look at you now And when it came to winning blue ribbons You must have shown the other kids mm -hmm. how I can see the judge's eyes as they handed you the prize I bet you made the cutest bow yeah. Oh, you, you must have been, been a beautiful, beautiful baby Cause baby, look at you now Uh, I never, I never saw anything look like that. Man. <laughs> That's terrible. Look at that. <laughs> what a fun song! I think every one of us must have been a beautiful baby. Coming up, Ava Barber asks us to pardon her southern accent. Art Duncan dances up a storm to "Something's Got to Give," and Ken Delo sings "I'm an Old Cow Hand." And here's another reminder to stay with us at the end of the show when I visit with a talented Guy Hovis. And now back to the show. Johnny Mercer was born in Savannah, Georgia, so the words of this song came easy for him. It should also be a natural for a girl from Knoxville, Tennessee, Ava Barber. It's a universal moon above you, ask the Irish, Ask the Greek, they can always understand I love you, no matter how they speak. Pardon my southern accent, pardon my southern drawl. It may sound funny, ah, but honey, I love y'all. If you don't like my accent, if you don't like my drawl, then just don't listen, let's start kissing Bet you'll fall Come on now, let me hear you steal my stuff When you say, do you love me? All I gotta say is show sure enough Pardon my southern accent Didn't I hear you draw? Were you just sighing or replying? I love y'all Come on now, let me hear you steal my stuff When I say, do you love me? All you gotta say is show sure enough Pardon my southern accent Didn't I hear you draw? Were you just sighing or replying? I love y'all Were you just sighing or replying? And Ava, we love your southern accent. Don't lose it. Next, the voice of Joe Feeney with Bob Ralston at the organ. The song, one of five Academy nominations for the team of Mercer and Mancini. <laughs> They 
They say there's a tree in the forest, a tree that will give you a sign. Come along with me to the sweetheart tree. Come and carve your name next to mine. They say if you kiss the right sweetheart, the one you've been waiting for, of white will burst into sight and your love will be true Joe and Bob. Here's a fine example of music by Johnny Mercer, a man who had no formal musical training. Something's got a gift. Arthur Duncan gives you the beat. an old cow hand. Yeah, getting older, too. They call me old Lonesome Candilo. If you wore shirts like this, you'd be lonesome, too, I'll tell you that. Get lonesomer. I'm an old cow hand from the Rio Grande. But my legs ain't bowed and my cheeks ain't tanned. I'm a cowboy who never saw a cow Never roped a steer cause I don't know how I sure ain't fixin' to start in now Yippee-i-o-ki-yay Yippee-i-o-ki-yay I'm an old cow hand From the Rio Grande And I learned to ride For I learned to stand I'm a riding fool who is up to date. I know every trail in the Lone Star State. Cause I ride the range in an old V8. Yippee, I, oh, ki Yippee, I, oh, ki I'm an old cow hand from the Rio Grande. And I came to town. Just to hear the band Well, I know every song that the cowboys know About the old corral where the doggies go I learned them all on the radio yippee i o yippee i o yippee i o 
Well, I got to get off this trail now, so here I go. Well, there goes Ken Delo, our mechanized cowboy riding off into the sunset. And you know, speaking from experience, unless he changes that thing into high gear, he's not going to catch a lot of doggies. Our delightful Szymanski sisters join our Mercer salute. This song was the first of 17 award nominations for Johnny. The melody is by another good friend of ours, Harry Warren. Jeepers, creepers, where'd you get those peepers? Jeepers, creepers, where'd you get those eyes? Gosh, I'll get up. How'd they get so lit up? Gosh, I'll get up. How'd they get that size? Golly gee. When they turn those heaters on. Woe is me. Got to put my cheaters on. Jeepers, creepers. Where'd you get those peepers? All those weepers. How they hypnotize. Where'd you get those eyes? Jeepers, creepers, where'd you get those peepers? Jeepers, creepers, where'd you get those eyes? Gosh, I'll get up, how'd they get so lit up? Gosh, I'll get up, how'd they get that size? Jeepers, creepers, where'd you get those peepers? All oh, those weepers, how they hypnotize. Where'd you get those eyes? Where'd you get those eyes? Jeepers, creepers, didn't this sound good? The Samanska sisters, just one year in our training program. The man we're honoring this evening wrote the words for the beautiful title song of the movie, Laura. Here's a fine Bob Ballard arrangement of this melody with George Cates conducting the orchestra. <laughs>
Folks, we're going to move away from our theme for a few minutes to bring you a very special guest, a wonderful lady and great artist, Sylvie Lynn. Sylvie, before you play, how about chatting with our television audience? Oh, I would love to. I am a concert pianist and I come from Sweden. I had the pleasure this spring to be with Mr. Welk and the musical family on tour. And needless to say, I am delighted to return again. And I should very much like to play for you the same work I did on that tour, Rachmaninoff's Prelude in C-Sharp Minor. Isn't she sensational? What a great artist. And now back to a Johnny Mercer song made so very popular by Paul Weston and the Pipe Pipers. You'll hear Tanya, the Kurt Ramsey Quintet, and some nice saxophone by Russ Klein. <laughs> Just why? 
watch the smoke rings rise in the air you'll find your share of memories there so dream when the day is through Never are as bad as they seem So dream, dream, dream history with our recording of this song. Words, of course, by Johnny Mercer and melody by the great trumpet man, Siggy Elman, who was also featured on the Goodman recording. wonderful songs of Johnny Mercer. 
My special guest became a permanent member of the Lawrence Welk musical family in 1970, and he is definitely a songwriter's best friend. Please welcome Guy Hovis. Hey, Guy. Hey, Mary Lou. <laughs> so, we were the 70s kids, weren't we? We sure you were. You and I started in 1970. What do you think when Holy you look back smokes. at this show from 1976? Well, what do I think about? <laughs> I think about 1976 when we took a very memorable trip together. <laughs> we That's did. what I think to about. We went to Went to Europe, went all over Europe. We had a great time. I, I love this uh, show. I love Johnny Mercer's lyrics. I always thought he was one of the most clever lyricists that ever wrote, you know, writing things from Moon River to I'm an old cow hand to things like Jeepers Creepers and uh, and then uh, Charade. He was just, he was a great lyricist and I've always admired his work, so I enjoyed, enjoyed this show. Well, the last time we got together, we talked all about your career in show business. But no. now you're in politics. How did you get from the Lawrence Welk Show to the world of politics? Yikes. Well, let's see. How did I do that? It wasn't easy. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I moved back to Mississippi about a year after my old friend Trent Lott had gotten elected to the United States Senate. Uh, he'd been in House of Representatives for 16 years, eight terms before that. And I'd always participated in his uh, campaigns, you know, from the time he was elected in 1972. Um, so I was back in Mississippi, and, he, and he'd been trying to run his state offices out of Washington, and he needed somebody on the ground in Mississippi to do it. It just wasn't working. So he just out of the blue called me one day and said, hey, I, I need somebody down there to, to uh, supervise uh, my state offices. So would you be interested? And I said, good heavens, <laughs> Trent, I don't know anything about politics. I said, I've been in show business for 20 years. He just looked at me and smiled and said, you'll do fine. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know really what he meant by that. I think he insinuated there was a lot of uh, similarities between <laughs> politics and show business. You think? <laughs> I'm here to tell you. <laughs> There's not a whole lot of similarity. It's, uh, I found out politics is a lot more work for a lot less money. <laughs> <laughs> so what exactly does running a state office entail? Well, you know, that's a, a, a real good question, as they say. Um, most people think congressional offices uh, are, are campaign offices. They think mm -hmm. people, that's, that's where they do their political campaign. Well, not at all. Uh, as a matter of fact, it's uh, illegal to uh, do campaign operations out of an office that's paid for by you, the taxpayer. So anyhow, each member of Congress, they have their office in Washington, and then they have offices in their districts in the state. Uh, with the senators, they have to cover the whole state. Um, so we've got uh, four offices in Mississippi. Uh, we did have five, we closed one. But um, in the state offices, uh, we do what is called constituent service work. Whereas in the Washington office, they deal mainly with legislation. Um, now constituent service work could be is mainly helping people try to get through this unbelievable uh, bureaucracy that it, we've uh, built over the years and uh, uh, through the red tape of uh, working with federal agencies like the Social Security Administration, Veterans Administration, Internal Revenue, things like that. That's, that's basically what we do is uh, our staff tries to help people that just are, can't get anywhere. They've hit, run into a brick wall. We're supposed to only deal with the uh, federal agencies. Of course, Trent's motto has always been, if anybody calls this office for anything, you try to help them. So we do. And on top of uh, that, I, I supervise the uh, state offices and uh, try to keep us all on the same page with the Washington office. And, uh, and I spend a lot of my time going around the state representing Trent at uh, events that he can attend. and. Uh, and sitting in on meetings and letting them know what's even happening. He couldn't have a better representative. But I don't know about that, but uh, it's been a it's been a, a real good experience for me. I really enjoyed it. You have a wonderful family. I what's do. happening with them? I have, a, uh, you know, I don't know how God blessed me so this late in life uh, to have met uh, my wife, sis. That sounds funny, did not it? It sounds beautiful. Here's my huh? wife, Sis. <laughs> her name is actually Sarah, but no people have called her Sis all her life. But uh, she's, a, she's a registered nurse, and my friends kid me. They say, well, in your old age, I'd go find your own personal <laughs> nurse. Uh, but she is a, a wonderful person, and she is a, she's a quite a, a talented gal. She's, uh, 
she's been in administration in the uh, surgical services for, I don't know, 30, 35 years, and, uh, which is a very stressful job, as you can imagine, running yes. operating rooms and everything uh, that goes with them. But a couple of years ago, she was about, uh, she felt like she just needed a change. She'd done it too long and she was uh, kind of stressed out. So she just moved over to working uh, at the cancer center, the Hederman Cancer Center. She's a director of program development at the Hederman Cancer Center. At, Baptist Hospital in Jackson, and she works with cancer patients and their families and helps them uh, when they're diagnosed. She, uh, she, she gives a class, tells them what to expect. She just kind of guides them through the uh, treatment process. And uh, you can imagine she's wonderful at it. And uh, now people come up to me all the time and say, uh, your wife's an angel. I say, yeah, I know it. And we have beautiful grandchildren. Sis has got a uh, daughter, Dawn, has three beautiful children. Uh, Blair, who's uh, 14, and Mary Margaret, who's six, and Tori, who's three. Uh, we don't get to see enough of them, but... Uh, and then we have uh, Sis's son, Hunter, who uh, works in Washington, and my daughter, Julie, in Phoenix, who've yet to get married. So we're going to be looking at grandkids. You're going to be busy for a while. <laughs> We're going to be going to see grandkids in wheelchairs if they don't get going here. <laughs> well, you've got a brand new CD out. I, you know, I did. I finally, I've, people have been asking me for years to record a patriotic CD. A lot of the songs that uh, I uh, sang, like God Bless the USA, and uh, the song I sang at the presidential inauguration in 05, Let the Eagle Soar. I finally got that thing recorded last year. Oh, fabulous. And uh, it's done really well, and I, I'm proud of it. It came out really better than I expected, let's put it that way. Still, still most of the notes come out of this croaky old voice, and I uh, thank God for that. Never a croaky old voice. Do you have a favorite Welk story? <laughs> a favorite Welk story? Well, heavens above, I'm sure. There's so many of them we've talked about. We need to just sit around sometime and tell Lawrence Welk stories. My favorite uh, Lawrence Welk uh this is personal for me and for Rollin. Back when we were working those four days a week and we'd go catch an airplane on Thursday night after recording and go somewhere and do a public appearance Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then fly back and uh, to the studio to do the TV show. We had done that for two or three years and we were tired. And we were on one of those one-nighter things we'd go on, uh, oh, yeah. those three weeks of one-nighters. and and. Uh, uh, Lawrence looked at us one day, and I guess he could see we were really worn out, and he came up and got whoever was sitting in the seat on the airplane next to Roland, let him sit there, and he talked to us, and he said, kids, you look a little tired. And we said, yes, Mr. Welch, we're, we're, <laughs> we're running all over the country working on weekends, and, uh, and uh, well, anyhow, to make a long story short, he said, well, here's my suggestion to you. Work less and ask for more money. <laughs> <laughs> and we did. <laughs> and it worked. So uh, I, I've always thought uh, that the man was wise. Thank, thank you, Lawrence. <laughs> and thank you, Guy. This has been such a great time with you. Thank you, Mary Lou. It's always good to be with you. And thank you. It's always great to be with you, too. Until next time, as Lawrence Welk always said, keep a song in your heart.
KCPT connects teachers with the latest techniques and tools.